Hi everyone, I'm J.D. Hoovener, your host of The Bold Today Show, where you, the inventor, entrepreneur, and business owner, get your daily dose of inspiration to make the world a better place. This week, we're talking about baseball. Happy Monday, everybody. And I'm sure you all know, if you're in a baseball city, that your hometown baseball team has kicked off the season. Uh, we're well into April now, and uh, the first games have already been batted off or kicked off, whatever the right word is. Um, I'm a little impartial. I've got uh, um, Seattle Mariners in mind. We're going to be going to a game here next week, so I'm pretty excited to go check that out. So if you got some time, uh, put in the comments below who your favorite team is. I want to hear about it and get the conversation started this week. So this week, we're going to be focusing on a, an invention that was just issued. I mean, believe it or not, right? Baseball has been around for over 100 years, I mean, since the 1800s. This patent was just granted in February 2018. And it's for a swing apparatus, okay? Patent number 9,888,360. This patent uh, is about how to actually perform a practice, a practice swing, right? To get, you know, get the muscles, the muscle memory all lined up, uh, how to hit that ball. Now, the, the title of the patent, uh, as you can see from up here, uh, does specify that it's a, it's a baseball swing training apparatus. But I want to focus our attention today on claim one. All right, and for all you who are brand new to this, claims are what actually gives the, the rights to the patent. And it's the heart. It's what explains what you'll be able to enforce as the patent owner when you go out and try to enforce your patent on the free world. So going to claim one, which is obviously the first claim, we're going to focus in on the words and the preamble. The preamble is the first part of the claim that's right above, just next to the number one. It sort of sets the stage for the later words that come in the claim. Here it states uh, that it's a ball swing training apparatus. Now don't, don't mix that up, and it just says ball. It doesn't say baseball, or softball, or cricket ball, <laughs> right? It just says ball, and that's on purpose because the claims are meant to be uh, read in terms of the broadest reasonable interpretation. That's the way the courts are going to read into that. So the claim itself here was well crafted. It didn't just say baseball, it just said ball, which allows for the potential for this claim to have rights over softballs and cricket balls and who knows, golf balls, right? If there's a swing apparatus, if it's positioned in the same way, it could certainly be applicable for other types of sports. So uh, claim language and claim interpretation is really important, uh, and this is governed under 37 CFR 1.75. So that's the law we covered today. Uh, so any of you uh, who are baseball fans, you know, you love the sport, you know, I want to see uh, some comments below and have you share this with anyone you have on social media that want to maybe get a little kick in the, in the right direction if they're innovating. Um, you know, baseball is one of those sports that's constantly got something new, uh, even though the common threads go way back, you know, to the 19th century. So hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm your host, J.D. Hoovener of The Bold Today Show. Go big, go bold. Go big, go bold at boldip.com.